All righty, welcome to Did You Know? We are cutting out all the fluff. This is a quick 20 minute session. We're going to get to a lot of tips and tricks. Um, you wanna advance? So uh, first we just wanna say thank you to all of the sponsors who made this possible. Um, Map Anything, the Athene Group, Squid, obviously Salesforce and Service Cloud. Super grateful um, that they made this possible. So I am Kelly Bentivo and have been in the Salesforce ecosystem for, gosh, 11 years now. Um, and all of the tips and tricks that we're gonna go through today, it doesn't matter if you've been an admin or a dev for six months or six years, these are all little things sprinkled along the way that you might just not know, right? So hence, did you know? And I am Chris Whitehead and I've been in the ecosystem for six years. Um, I am the um, Atlanta user group leader and um, I uh, have some tips and tricks that I have gained, so hopefully you guys get some value out of this and obviously some cool fun facts about us. So, so they're, they're aligned, well, they're aligned mine. with who so they go to. I did uh, drink beer at the world's northernmost brewery, Mock Brewery, Tromso, Norway, if you ever have a chance. I drove a dog sled there myself. Uh, it was a very cool experience, so um, hit me up on Twitter, I'll tell you more about that. Yep, and then I've been to every state uh, east of the Mississippi, and I've only been to one state west of the Mississippi, and that's California. Right, so, so we need to change that. <laughs> so go figure. So this is a cool, um, a cool thing that most people don't um, know, is that when you have a number field, you can use, um, hang on. <laughs> that's to tell us we're in the session right now, and don't be outside. So, so a cool thing with numbers and currency and things is that you can use the abbreviations for thousands, millions, billions. Um, I don't know if it does trillions. I've so never tried. it does, but only in Lightning. Um, I come from a uh, previous, <laughs> no, previous uh, financial uh, investment company, and this was a time saver that was huge for myself. I didn't want to be sitting there reading about commas and zeros, and um, obviously. Uh, you know, if you mess up something there and it goes on uh, on a report to a client, that's a, a terrible situation. So really yeah, great shortcut. Yeah, so yeah, when you're putting one million and you put an extra zero and it's supposed to be one million, that's, that's a not problem. a good thing. That's, that's really bad. That's a big pipeline inflation, right? So one of my other favorites is uh, the ability to really handle not only your search flexibility, but controlling uh, the order of objects, right? So for myself, if I'm um, searching, Possibly I want accounts to show up first, or I want my users to show up first. Um, your you know, service people may want cases to show up first. So there's a little feature in Salesforce, you can see this pin, it's a little grayed out, um, but you can pin to the top, and you can organize how you want those search results to show up every time you do a search. Really great feature, I think a lot of times we kind of bypass that, right? We're going along, we're doing our thing, we're searching, and whatever Salesforce gives us, we're just taking that, we're not going, hey, can I customize that? Can I make that faster for my needs? Anytime you can minimize the amount you have to scroll to get to the key records that you use the most, you're gonna save yourself time and aggravation. So a really great tool. Um, you also have the ability, this is one, well these two really, that I forget about all the time. I spin up reports because I go, gosh, I need something more than just this one record, or I'm having a really hard time finding this one specific detail. You can limit it to items that just you own. So great for your sales users, right? When they're searching for something and coming up with a bunch of different records throughout the system, they can just look for things that they own if you've got you know, uh, public sharing. Exact phrases, super helpful. This is where I <laughs> get into it, right? Um, you've got the ability to add additional filters. So a lot of times I would go and say, gosh, I gotta go spin up a report to do this and forget about this feature. So utilize your features, uh, I'm sorry, your filter features. Um, it'll be a little link there that says show filters. So make sure you take advantage of that. Super easy to bypass when you're going through day-to-day uh, -day activities. Oh, this is a cool one. I love this one. So a lot of times I'll need to get a view, a list view, or a printable view of uh, my pick list values. I mean, you know, I'll have like, maybe hundreds of pick list values and I'll need to sort them or look through them or give them to somebody else to look through. So you can actually print, uh, uh, you, can fr you can have a printable view of all your pick lists. Um, so whether you're sharing with your team and copying and pasting things or 
you know, you can print it out and print it to PDF and convert it to Excel if you needed to and things like that. So, so basically imagine when you have, you know, that list of 60 competitors and you set it up that one time and someone else wants to see it or you want to put it somewhere else, really obnoxious to try and type all that in. You do your printable view, copy, paste, and then we also put on here the pick list value sets. So that's another way to take the values that you're gonna put on one object and take those same values and put them on another object. So this was a little, a, a twofer basically. So two great things you can do here, but I have a lot of times where we take pick list values, we wanna share it out to teams and say, are you still using all of these values? Um, and you want an easy way to deliver those when sometimes they've grown to you know, 80 line items. Okay, so this might, well actually, I do have another favorite, but this is like a really close second. Um, a lot of us use ranges, right? So who does ranges on reports? Right, end of quarter, end of year, all that good stuff. There is so much more flexibility that's out there, and what you do is you actually put that detail into the report uh, filter criteria. So we've actually listed a, I mean, just a handful, but there's a whole page of options. You would put in, you know, say, create a date equals this year or create a date equals last two months, right? Anything you wanna do in quarters ago or you know, N weeks ago, last N weeks, you're just replacing your ends with your numbers. And that's a really great way of taking any reports that are on dashboards and having them run for you. I used to have a lot of really custom things that uh, teams were asking for in terms of dashboards. So the end of the quarter or the end of the year, I would have to go in there <laughs> And I forgot about this great tool, and I would go, all right, well, now I gotta go flip this to you know, three weeks ago um, and have that running forward. This is a great way of doing that and automating it when it's not like a standard this quarter, current quarter. This expands basically upon your, uh, your range options when you're doing reporting. So how many people have dashboards that they use, that they look at all the time? How many people sometimes have to share those out or they don't, it's like, oh, I didn't see that dashboard. Well, one cool thing is if you use Chatter, you can actually post a snapshot of that dashboard into Chatter, and then you can at mention somebody that's looking for it. Like, here's what it is at this time right now. And then if it refreshes the next day, you could, like, they're like, oh, I, I want to see it again. And then you can post it again. So that's a really cool feature that I've used um, on countless occasions. And really helps, right, if you're trying to um, call out a specific right. item on a dashboard, hey, I noticed, dot, 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 you may want to look at this, you may want to talk to your sales team about this, versus, you know, you deliver the, the entire dashboard maybe in an automated email, are they really looking at it? Are they finding those key things that you as the admin have picked out and noticed? Right. And so this one, we're going to play a little video, but this is going to show you how to actually go through and remove um, your disclaimer from your exported reports. Um, I've listed on here, consider compliance, right? Because <laughs> that, that's a little bit of a problem. But in one of my past orgs, um, we were sharing reports quite a bit with our customers. And we were always having people uh, have to remove out that footer because how we've named it, it's not necessarily what we want our customers to see. Um, or maybe it doesn't even make sense, right? We have some kind of crazy you know, uh, org specific jargon as part of that name and it just creates more questions. So you do have this ability to go um, and set up under your reports and dashboard settings and you can exclude that disclaimer from your exported reports um, or even from p uh, printable page views. So the disclaimer on here is just consider your compliance. When you do this, it's for your entire org for all of your reports. So it's not like you can pick and choose. And now we're gonna segue actually into a live demo. So the rest of these are all gonna be live. Uh, we felt like the earlier ones were just quick hits. Um, if any of you do want to take advantage of these slides after this session, just ping Chris or I on, uh, on Twitter and we will gather that list and um, send that out to you. I love this one because I was an admin um, in an org that had like about 30 people. And a lot of times those people would call me and say, okay, this is what I'm seeing on this page and then, you know, yes, you can log in. You can go to the, u if you have it set up, you can log in as any user. Um, what's cool is you used to have to ask support to turn that on for you. Um, now you can actually turn that on yourself um, in your org. And then, um, and so when they're talking to me, I can actually log in as them. But instead of doing like four clicks to get to the user page to then log in as them, there's a Chrome extension 
that just calls the user stuff. And so I can log in as Kelly's. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> user. We didn't practice this in the demo. Right here. Well, you're the only user in the, besides me. So like, so if I'm on, I'm going to log back out of her real quick. So if I'm on a contact page, let's go to an account. And then she's talking to me and she's saying, I'm not seeing this field or I'm not seeing the, you know, whatever. I can actually go there, log in as her, and then it pulls right up that page. And then it would be what she would see. So less clicks. Which is kind of mind blowing because I had not utilized this before Chris and I started talking. And I go, I got login as any user. And he said, do you have the extension? I went, what is that going to give me? And then seeing this, I went, OK, that's a lot of time savings, right? We do a lot as admins to automate for our sales users. And we kind of forget about ourselves. This is a great tool to be able to take advantage of that. It's um, called Quick Login As. So just do Salesforce Quick Login As in the, uh, in the Chrome Apps uh, web store. And if any of you have trouble finding that, I mean, again, yeah, just ping, me ping on Chris Twitter on or Twitter. Uh, the Twitter Chrome community. Find me. And next you have the report. Oh, yeah. Here's another good one. So I had this requirement where uh, my company wanted to see um, the hours that were spent on a project. And so we, have, we had an object that would roll all the, the hours that they'd spent. And so they wanted to further their billing purposes. So they didn't want to have to go they wanted to be able to see it by project, so by record. And so I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? Well, you can actually create custom report links on the project record that will, so you build your report out like you normally would build your report out. And then in your filter, you put the record ID of the report where you want to pull from and you leave it blank. And so when you build your link out, you say pull the ID from the record that I'm on and put it in that filter. So I'm going to show you on the opportunity how, or on the account, how I can pull with just one link all the closed um, opportunities. And so it just pulls the opportunities from that account. And so it pulls that ID in. So same link, auto magic, plugs in that ID where it says account ID equals. No matter what account you're on, every time you click that link on a different account, it's going to populate that um, filter criteria for you and generate results. So again, automating for the admin just as much as we do for the user. All right, so this next one, um, has anyone here ever used email logs out of Salesforce? Oh, we've got two, okay. So this was one that um, I had a need to do because we were trying to send something to, uh, basically through workflow, supposed to send a message, and um, people were saying, hey, these emails are not going out to our internal people, they're not going out to our customers. This is a super huge problem. And then they said, Salesforce is broken, right? Salesforce is terrible, it's not sending my emails, how dare Salesforce? And I said, well, are you sure it's Salesforce? So what I did was, Chris, you'll go to setup. Okay. The way this works, it's really easy. So if you're sitting here going, oh, email logs, this seems complicated. It's not, and anyone can do it. In the quick find search, just type in email log. And so you've got your email log files, and you're just going to click on request an email log. Now, again, this is a dev org, so like, we don't really have a lot of stuff happening in here. Um, but it's as simple as setting your start time and your end time some point within the last 30 days. So that's a pretty big range, right, that you can have access to. You can even utilize specific emails that you're trying to use as the to or the from. So if a specific customer is saying, hey, like I never received this, um, we, you could even limit the query to just that or you could pull everything. And what happens is when you submit the request and it turns up, uh, Chris, if you'll switch back to the um, mm -hmm. PowerPoint, yep. it's actually going to, oh, that's, it's small print. Um, it's actually going to put all the details of your email, the subject, you know, the, the body of the email, and it's going to have you know, an R or a D or a T, and these correspond to the type of mail event. So an R reception, the email was successfully received. A D delivery, the email was successfully sent. A T, transient failure, right? Eh, problem. Um, what I found was all of the emails 
went out. So I said, hey guys on my engineering team, um, this is not a Salesforce problem, and I'm not just saying it, here's the proof, and it turned out we had some server issues and some other things happening. But that's a great way of saying, okay, I've got a problem, how can I start eliminating variables to figure out where this problem really resides? Because if they had said on their side, hey, you know, it's not, it's not us, we can see the message went out from our server, well then it's the customer server, right? You can, you can start figuring out where that problem uh, really, really is housed and then how to, how to fix that. So this is a great way of having admin and developer access to tools outside of what you might get with, you know, Marketo or Pardot or some of these other, you know, mass email functions. I'm sure they have something that corresponds to this, but this is something right in the back end of setup that you can immediately have access to. And then, okay, now we're at my favorite one. So, <laughs> if this looks scary to you and you go, oh my God, I, don't, I never want to deal with this, um, this is why we're here. This is my absolute favorite This is tool. my favorite too. So, if Chris, if you will pop over to an account, mm -hmm. and I also have a kind of a fun story about this, if you're ever doing a demo um, <laughs> with a dev org that's recently be, uh, been spun up. So, we're gonna pop over to an account, and I've created uh, an image formula. And so you see here on activity status, we have uh, a green flag. Um, let's actually have you, since this one has a, scroll back up and let's go to the accounts tab. And I created a view, it might be under all accounts. Yeah, just hit go on all accounts. Now you try to remember like where you, where you saved that. Yeah, save. save or cancel. So what I've done is I've actually said, hey, I want a visual indicator on my accounts and I wanna know how recently my salespeople have talked to this account. So this is gonna be another like twofer, right? We try to throw a lot of stuff in at one time when, when we're doing a demo and we've only got 20 minutes. Um, so we've got this act activity status indicator. It's going to evaluate the last activity on the account and I've built an image formula behind the scenes to set my ranges. So now that we've seen this, let's click on, um, not the one you had, because that, that one didn't have a date. Maybe one of these ones that, that's red or, red or orange. Okay. So we'll pop into one of those. Now this is the fun fact, right? So <laughs> when you spin up a dev org, um, all of them are gonna be recent because it's a new dev org. Uh, so when I was trying to figure out this formula, I said, well, that's a wrinkle. So <laughs> what I've done is we're gonna show you the formula in a moment, but I actually created this dummy field called demo activity date. Um, I could have just hidden it from view and not told you, but I'm a full disclosure kind of person. And I thought, well, what a, what a great other learning opportunity to say, these are the problems that might happen on a demo. Um, so we are actually using the demo activity date there instead of um, the last activity date on the account, but you won't see that in the formula because I did some auto magic stuff anyway, and so we'll talk through it. If Chris, if you'll go to another little, no, no, don't nope, go okay. over here. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using this little pop out, you should, it's awesome. Um, we can go right to view fields. So forget setup and accounts and scrolling and all that annoying stuff, just use your little pop out. And we're gonna look for the activity status formula. So this was that really terrible formula that we saw and you go, oh God, right? That's a lot of, a lot of text there. Um, this formula is basically carrying us through the evaluation of my date parameters. Now this day since last activity, I basically would have taken today with the little brackets minus last activity date and have it be a formula that turns out a number. That number is what we're gonna use in our formula here to say, hey, how many days has it been since last activity? Is it 30, is it 60, is it two years, right? Has a has this sales rep ever talked to these people? And then we're going to put in a reference to an image. So actually this is kind of like a five-parter because we also use the graphics pack, which is free on App Exchange, and it gives you uh, the visual indicators, I mean really like a huge library of them, so that you'll notice, if you ever look up how to create an image formula, a lot of times you'll see a comma at the end here, and then like you might say 30 comma 60. It's trying to give you the height and width of what you wanna take that image and, and scale it down. So you don't have one indicator that's super small and another one that just blows out your whole page. So the graphics packs are, um, all of the icons are all the same size, so I like to use it. And so what you end up doing is, if we took this here and put that into a URL, it would generate the picture for the uh, green flag from the graphics pack. So 
to get to like the ultimate reason why this is so amazing, everyone talks about commenting out your code in Apex, right? What they don't talk about is you can actually comment out your formulas. And the way to do that is you'll see here I've put a backspace, I mean, a, what do you call that? Slash, thank you. Um, and an asterisk. So you put that at the front and then you put that at the end to close it out. And that allows you to take really complex formulas if you're doing nested if statements, um, things that in the moment make sense to you, but later you're gonna go, I have no idea how to unwind this, or I have no idea how to add to this because we've changed our sales process and I need to make an update. This allows you, oh, oh. I'm just talking too long. That's telling me I gotta wrap it up. <laughs> if the slide goes down, you know you've been talking too much. Um, but this tells you what these are each doing, right? So the first one is telling me, uh, when you look at all the circumstances that can come up, I want to evaluate meetings that might happen today. Sometimes we set up these formulas and you go, okay, if it's in the past or if it's in the future and how far in the past, and you forget about, well, that works for everything past or, like, you know, past or forward, but what about today? So I evaluate the today, I'm evaluating the future, I'm saying the last 30 days, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, more than 90. That's where someone's getting a call. And always an else result, right? <laughs> this one's the, the toxic icon. I just thought that was funny. Um, I believe, as an admin, that I have figured out every possible scenario here, but I've put in this toxic one because if that ever shows up, that tells me there is some kind of circumstance that my formula did not anticipate. And I've got to figure out why, and I've got to go fix that. So this one's doing a lot. If anyone wants more detail on how to set up this formula, all the steps, or has questions, by all means, like, you know, reach out to Chris and I on Twitter. We're more than happy to help you share the, um, you know, share the detail and uh, we can get that for you. But this one's a great way to comment out stuff that could be complex. And now if someone comes to me and says, hey, you know, before we cared about, you know, uh, 60 to 90 days, or really 61 to 90 days. And then they said, we don't really care about, uh, you know, anything from, you know, today to 90 days but 90 to 120, we have a new benchmark. I can easily come in here and update my days, right? So I can flip this, we've got our 60, our days since last, you know, less than 91. I can manipulate those numbers, update this here, and then over here we've got a little uh, parens out with 61-90. This is just if you ever have a situation where the icon cannot display, the actual text of the formula will display instead. And so that's a good alternative. It's something you want to build into your formulas. Just again, so much like the toxic, we're anticipating all possible scenarios and, and trying to answer that on the formula side. Um, so that's my favorite. That's the, I think, the uh, last one. Yep, that is the last. So our next, we're going to pop back over our next slide. I love Bitmoji. So <laughs> you'll see that in any presentation I do. Um, so really what we want to challenge everyone to do is share with us, like what was your favorite? Do you have one that we didn't talk about or you've heard of and you want more detail and then we're happy to uh, find that for you or challenge you know, that forward and, um, yeah. and, and, and go from there. So any questions on what we showed? I know that was like super fast. Uh, well, this is on your, your formula. Um, hmm, gosh, that is a good question. No. I know on like, you know, your apex, you go, hey, this won't count. But I have had times where formulas were so complex that I had that issue and I, I wasn't sure. Um, so who said no? Yeah. I'm going to talk to her and just make sure that that's legit <laughs> and let you know. Um, I would love for I, someone I to try to build something. I think something. it is. Yeah, yeah I make you're sure. you're commenting out everything, so you're not, it's not yeah, part of Yeah, that's true. Right? I would think it would be. Why, why, would, it, why right. would they design something against best practices? I, yes, we're gonna go with a yes on that. If someone proves it wrong, I will get you a prize. We'll figure something out. Um, you'll have taught me something, so I would appreciate it. Other questions? Other things you might wanna see again, yes. What are some of the things that you thought about putting in the workbench? Oh, workbench. So, uh, great use case. I've got a team that, uh, so has anyone worked with uh, loading uh, campaign members? Does anyone have to do that in their role? So in my past life, when I had to do that, now I've got a marketing team, woo, um, I would always forget to add the status of the campaign member. And I'd run it through data loader, and data loader would say, ha, oh, that's funny, I'm not doing that. Um, I need your status. <laughs> and so if you run it through Workbench, it'll just pick the defaults, 
Um, even if the default for that campaign is um, if you've used advanced setup and flipped it from sent to something else, it'll pick that one for you. And so in my mind, that's a great way of um, when you're dealing with a ton of records and a ton of things to just automate quickly um, and, and not have to uh, worry about that. There's, I mean, there's probably a lot of other things on Workbench yeah, I can't that. Even remember what, yeah. We almost felt like that was like too powerful and could cause too Workbench many problems. Workbench could be its own right. session. We, I will say, if anyone's planning to go to Midwest Streaming, we're likely to do if if we get selected um, something similar to this, but with additional content and kind of like a level two. Um, so Workbench was definitely one. I'm trying to think other ones. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things you'll always hear about, right? Like power of one formula. The login is any user of just enabling that behind the scenes, but we try to take that a step further and, and go through you know, the Chrome extension and other tools um, that you can utilize. We didn't talk about field trip. Um, anyone use field trip in here? God, you guys have two. You have a new email log, you need field trip. All right, so we're, we're on the same lane. There is, oh, tell me. Compliance? We need to talk about that. Let's get some instruction and we'll share that out with the group. I think that's a great one. All right, that's good. I'm trying to think what else. We. Um, I don't remember. I, yeah, I mean, this kind of goes back a little bit, but I think that you know we tried to do something more complex. So like the formula, we wanted to deliver an image-based formula at the same time we were talking about graphics pack, at the same time we are talking about demo, and then also how to comment that out. And so we were trying to take more of like a complex so that you know, we only had a limited amount of time, uh, but make sure that it, it resonated with you guys. Yes, Roy? Yes. No, somebody developed it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it w um, I have to turn lightning on. It's not on. That's a good one to try. Well, let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. That's pretty smart. Maybe it sounds like you might have written a book on lightning. I'm just saying. <laughs> it does not yet. <laughs> womp womp. Um, but hey, you know what? I think as, as more and more, um, you know, Salesforce is not a small <laughs> entity by any means. I think as more of us uh, are, are moving toward lightning, um, I'm going to do a quick shout out for Jillian. I have done my readiness report. I'm working on my trailhead badges. I'm going to do an accelerator. Um, encourage everybody else to do that so you can figure out like what's going to break, what's going to work, and, and you know how to move. Um, I think that some of these things that are not available, you'll start to see either uh, apps themselves getting over there or someone super smart coming in and going, how can I make this work? So. Right, right. Right. I know that I was kind of going to ask that too. <laughs> Tell us, Roy. Like, is it it's similar to that printable view where you're kind of copy, copy pasting easy? I, yeah, we, we've given Roy no prep here. Um, why don't you get those to me and we can share them out and uh, let people know. Any other questions or things that you want to see again? I know we, well, we had the way, weirdest we're, time. We're way so over time. I, I, I wasn't even sure. I'm like, is it 2.30? I, I don't know in a sense. API names, okay. Other ones. Um, last call for questions. I know I'm sorry, I guess we went over. Nope, okay. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate it. Again, hashtag did you know, and uh, find us on Twitter at Kelly Bentubo. And at CYHead09. Yes, all right, thank you guys. <laughs>